Hey, welcome back to WQLN PBS Homeroom. I miss Debbie and I love that I am here learning and teaching with you today. Today we're going to start with our positive thoughts. Remember those are those good thoughts we have in our heads to help remind us how awesome we are. So let's start with awesome. Repeat after me. Say, I am awesome. I am fun. I am kind. I am creative. That means you're thinking a lot and have super good thoughts. And how about I love being me? Oh, wonderful. I love to start our lessons out like that with you. Well, today, my friends, we are going to be talking about gardens. A garden is an area of land and it's used for either growing flowers or fruits or vegetables or some herbs. Those are things that you cook with. Do any of you have any gardens? Some of you? Yes. Well, you can also have some neat gardens that bring in different kinds of animals like butterflies. Some of the flower gardens are used to attract butterflies. Some gardens, believe it or not, are even called rock gardens. And they have different kind of rocks and different outside things that you would put up, like outside decorations that you would put up outside to make your area look really pretty. So there's lots of different gardens. Even if you don't have a fruit or vegetable garden, you could even make yourself a little flower garden or a little rock garden. Today, we're gonna to talk about a vegetable garden. Now, Miss Debbie um, has a vegetable garden at her house, and it's not ready yet. It's too early in the season to plant it right now, but I will be planting it here in another month or so. I also have flower gardens. And flower gardens I love to have because they make my house look pretty and I love all the different colors and I also plant special flowers to bring in um, hummingbirds and butterflies so I like to have that kind of a, a flower garden as well my vegetable gardens I absolutely love because vegetable gardens are really good to have good healthy food for your family you know where it's grown and it's really great to be a part of that. But you know what makes it hard? Bugs. Bugs always seem to get into my garden, whether it's my flower garden or my vegetable garden. And they eat all the leaves and the flowers and they ruin my foods. And that makes me sad because all that hard work gets ruined from bugs. So I'm always looking for ways to keep my garden healthy. And one of the ways I found to keep my garden healthy was by having ladybugs in it. Ladybugs can help a garden be healthy. Ladybugs are a type of a beetle and they eat different kinds of insects, like real smaller insects. They eat things called aphids that are often in the garden and even different kinds of molds that grow on the garden. So ladybugs are really good to have around and they're also known to be good luck. How many of you would like to have some good luck? I know I would. And good luck to me is definitely having ladybugs around to help me have a good prosperous garden. So I'll take a ladybug any day. As a matter of fact, when I was outside working today, look what I found, the first one of the season. Can you see him or her? Ladybugs can be boys or girls. Yeah, the first ladybug of the season at my house. So I thought I wanna bring her in because maybe it'll help me to give good luck on all that I do for a little bit. But I'm gonna let her out after this because we definitely don't wanna keep the animals inside when they should be outside. And I'm going to place her whoa, around where my flower garden is right now and hopefully she'll stay there and make a home and maybe even attract some more ladybugs to help me keep my garden safe and healthy. She's pretty neat, she's moving pretty fast. 
Today, I have some ladybug activities for you to help you remember that ladybugs are good for your garden and they bring you good luck. So let's start with the one behind me right now with our ladybug matching game. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna call her a girl. I'm gonna put this little girl right in here and I'm gonna keep her in my little bug container until I'm done with this lesson and then I can put her outside into my flower garden where she will be very happy. She doesn't even want to go in here. Can you see? The little, little girl doesn't want to get off the, the little leaf I have her on. Those ladybugs I'll go like this. There. Now she's nice and safe in here. You can see her way in the back. Probably hard to see her. She's way in the back. And we'll just keep her nice and safe and then she'll be there for good luck throughout our lesson today. All right, my friends, behind me I have some shapes on a ladybug wing. But look, they're missing one of their wings. Each ladybug only has one wing. And ladybugs should have two wings. So I have the other part of the wing at the bottom. I'm going to pick up a wing and we'll see which shape matches the shape on the ladybug and we can put those ladybugs together. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look. We have a circle. Now a circle is just a nice shape that's totally round and no straight sides. Okay. And then we have this one. Do you know what this is? A heart. Yep, it starts down here in the middle and has a curve up and it has a point at the bottom. So hearts have curves and a point at the bottom. This shape is a square. All sides are exactly the same. A square has four sides, one, two, three, four, and all sides are exactly the same length. That's a square. Next to it, I call it a cousin of the square because a square has four sides too. But a, square, a rectangle has four sides and it has two short sides and it has two longer sides. So this is a rectangle and a rectangle has four sides. Two sides are the same size and two of the other sides are the same size. That's a rectangle. My last one is this one. Let's count the sides. One, two, three. That's a triangle. A triangle has three sides. They're all straight and they have points in the corners. All right, let's see if we can find some wings that will match up with our ladybugs. So down here, I'm gonna start with this one. All right, this one, let's count the sides together. I see they're straight sides, ready? One, two, three, four. This one has four sides and they're all straight. So if I put it here, oh, that doesn't look like a match. That doesn't have any straight sides. What about this one? No, that has curves. How about this one? Oh, that one's close. Let's see. That's a match. They both have four sides that are the same size. So we found a match for this ladybug. There. Nice. She's all put together. Let's try another one. Oh, I think this one will be an easy one. What is this one? Is this a circle or is this a heart? It's a heart. It is. It's a heart. It has the curve at the top and the slanted line to a point at the bottom. I think we can find that one pretty easily. That has curves, but it doesn't have the point. Did we find it? Yeah, we did. One heart and two hearts. Both of those look exactly the same. So we found two hearts to go on our ladybug. Let's try another one. Oh, I 
I know this one. Do you remember this one? This has straight sides. Will you count them with me? One, two, three. Has three straight sides. Is this one a circle or a rectangle or a triangle? I know it's not a circle either. So is it a rectangle or a triangle? It's a triangle. It's a triangle. Okay, let's look. Definitely not a match. Those already have matches. Okay, what about this one? Nope, this has four sides. Oh, that looks a lot alike. This had three sides. Let's count these sides. One, two, three. It's a match. We've got that ladybug all together. Wonderful. How about this one? This one has four sides. Will you count them with me? One, two, three, four. Two sides are the same length and two sides are longer than the first one, but they're the same length too. Is this a heart or a rectangle? Yep, a rectangle. Let's find that rectangle. There it is, right there. Both of them have two short sides and both of them have two longer sides. Good matching, friends. Our last one. Oh, we know this one. It's a circle. A circle doesn't have any straight sides, just one big curve. Let's see, our only ladybug left. Does it match? Yeah, sure does. So we have two circles there. Wonderful job with matching your shapes. That would be a fun game that you could play at home too. Great job. All right. Do you want to play another game with me? I have another game where I have some pretend vegetables. I can't use real vegetables now in my garden because it's too early to grow them. So Miss Debbie made some pretend vegetables up and made some zucchini squash. And we're gonna play a game, okay? But we have to go outside. Are you ready to go outside with me? Let's go. Well, welcome to my outside. This is going to be a real garden in a few months, but right now I made some zucchini squash in here. And if you notice, I have some leaves around my zucchini squash because I have some little tiny ladybugs who are gonna land on my leaves and help eat all those aphids and the molds and any kind of mites that might be on there. So let's pick this one first. Oh, there's a good one. Now this one has some numbers on the leaves and it tells me how many ladybugs I need to put on each leaf. Can you see that number? That's number three, yes. And this one is number four. So Miss Debbie has those ladybugs in her hand. We're gonna start with number three. We're gonna count out three ladybugs to put on our leaf to help keep our squash safe. Ready? We have one, two, three. Three ladybugs on our leaf. Let's do the next one. Number four. Okay. I'm going to peel the stickers off and you count with me. Ready? One. Two, three, that one's stuck, four, four ladybugs on my leaf. All right, let's pick another one. How about this squash over here? Let's see. What's this leaf? Number two. Okay, let's count out two ladybugs. Get 
Ready. One. And two. Two ladybugs are helping this leaf stay healthy. Let's see what number's on this one. Number one, straight line down. That's a number one. Okay. How many is there? One. Good job. All right, kiddos. I'm going to stop right there for that one because I told you that we would be releasing this ladybug out into the wild so she can help keep my flowers safe. Ready to go for a walk over to my flowers? Okay. I told you we would let her go. I'm going to set her down in the flowers where she can have a nice, good, safe place to be. She'll tuck down where it's nice and warm and she will keep all of the aphids and the mites out of my flowers. Well, I hope you had fun outside. I know I did. And I brought everything inside so I could finish that one leaf that I didn't get to by looking at the number and adding the ladybugs to it to match. Well, my friends, I have another fun activity for you that I thought I would do. Um, and that is going outside and finding some rocks that are in the shape of a ladybug. And that is a circle shape, kind of a round shape. Now it was hard to find perfectly round ladybugs or rocks. So I just did the best that I could. And what I did was I painted them. We first using just a marker. I took a black marker for the head and then I drew that line down the middle to show the two wings. And then I painted the rock red. So I did that with five different rocks. So you would just need markers and paint, or you could just use all markers. And then what I did, now that it's dry, I'm gonna draw some spots on it because I know our ladybugs have spots. This one has one spot on it. This one has two spots on it. This one will have one, two, three spots on it. This one will have one, two, three, four spots. And this one will have one, two, three, four, five spots. And I thought we could play a game with this. I used my paper leaf that I cut out and I put five circles in them. I'm gonna number the circles. One, two, three, four, and five. So I wrote my numbers and I drew dots to match. And then what you can do is pick up one of your ladybug rocks and count your dots. One, two. Let's find the number two here. Let's see, there it is. And you can set your rock on number two. And let's pick another one. This one has one, two, three spots. And I'll put it next to the number three. So a fun little activity you can do with just things around your house. And there's what it looks like when it's all done. Well, here I am with my brother, John, and he's playing the ukulele for us with a fun little ladybug song to help us remember how helpful ladybugs are in our gardens. You wanna start us off with an intro? Five little ladybugs flying in a line over the garden and feeling fine. One looked down and saw a snack and said, I'll be right back. Four little ladybugs flying in a line over the garden and feeling fine. One looked down and saw a snack and said, I'll be right back. 
four, three little ladybugs flying in a line over the garden and feeling fine. One looked down and saw a snack and said, I'll be right back. Doo -doo. Doo. Two little ladybugs flying in a line over the garden and feeling fine. One looked down and saw a snack and said, I'll be right back. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. <laughs> One little ladybug flying in a line over the garden and feeling fine. One looked down and saw a snack and said, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, what a fun song. Thank you for helping me out. Hope, a long time. <laughs> hopefully you at home can practice the ladybug song too and remember how good ladybugs are for our gardens. Well now my friends, it's story time and I thought we could cuddle up outside for a good story together. I have Milo with me. He loves being outside and you probably see Bella coming in and out of the screen. Ah, they enjoy being outside with me. My friends, I'm just getting ready to come read some books. I have this one called The Ladybug at Orchard Avenue. And this is a great one talking about a ladybug in a fruit orchard and on some rose bushes, a flower garden, and eating some aphids. So this is a really good one to learn a little bit more about gardens and the ladybug helpers. I also had a really good, good one I'm getting ready to read called Paddington's Garden. And I love this one especially because it talks about a couple different kinds of gardens. The girl in here is going to make a flower garden like we've talked about a little bit. And the boy is getting ready to make a rock garden. And then Paddington tries to decide what kind of garden he's going to make. So that's another really good book to read. Well, Miss Debbie decided to share this one with you. Charlie, the ranch dog. Now this is based on a real dog and his owner. Charlie is a dog who's kind of a lazy dog and he has jobs on the ranch. And one of his jobs is guarding the garden. So instead of a ladybug protecting our garden in the story, the ranch dog protects the garden. Charlie the ranch dog. Oh, hello. My name is Charlie. I live in the country. I'm a ranch dog. This is Susie. She's my best friend. We don't look too much alike. Susie doesn't have the paws that I have, or the droopy ears, or the floppy skin, or the droopy eyes. Susie's ears don't dangle. They never have, and they never will. But she's good at running. The first thing we have to do is chase Daisy, the cow, out of the yard. Daisy knows she's not supposed to be in the yard. Some cows never listen. Well, I guess I'll let Susie go ahead and do it this time. I'd like to give her a chance to shine every now and then. So Charlie was too lazy back here. He didn't want to get up and moving. So Susie got the cow out of the yard and right there is the garden. Boy, I bet a cow could do some damage to a garden. All righty, now that Daisy's under control, it's time for me to sniff the porch steps. I've got to keep all the critters out. I sniff up and down and up and down, all clear. Look at this big critter he missed. Luckily, Susie found him. After the porch steps are good and sniffed, I like to stop and have my breakfast. I can't be expected to do all this work on an empty stomach. And look at one of the critters eating his food with him. He's supposed to be keeping that critter away. After breakfast, I usually go help Mama in her vegetable garden. Mama loves her garden. I don't really understand all the fuss. I prefer a bacon garden myself. There's no such thing as bacon gardens. It sure is a good thing Mama has me to help her out. 
There's no way she'd get it all done without me. And all Charlie's doing is yawning. Look at Susie. She's helping carry the food around. And look at old chipmunk eating a pea. It isn't even lunchtime yet. And uh, oh, I think I'll sit down and rest for a minute and just... Uh, know what that means? He's sleeping. Huh? What did I miss? Oh, must have accidentally closed my eyes for a few seconds. I'd better get back to work. Uh, hello? Where'd everybody go? Charlie looks all over and he says, rats. I guess they went back to work without me. Guess I better take another nap. Wait, what's that? Me thinks I hear the sound of approaching beasts. Look at the beasts. It's the cows again. Daisy, no! Look, Daisy's eating the garden. I don't think a ladybug could help this one. Good thing Charlie's there. Charlie says, growl, and he scares the cows away. Phew, that was a close call. Sure is a good thing I decided to stay home. There's no telling what would have happened if I hadn't been here. So another cute critter to save the garden. We have ladybugs who eat the aphids and different kind of mites and dusts in there. And we have ranch dogs helping to keep the farmer's cows out of the garden. My friends, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you get to get outside and do some sort of gardening yourself. If you remember, all of our activities are on wqln.org, learning at home. And remember, keep reading, keep learning, and keep watching. WQLN, where learning is brought to life. Thank you, friends. Bye-bye.